who's ready to rock fire nation jld here and we have an audio masterclass that will set your pants and hair on fire and that is tech that will set your business on fire in 2019. And to talk about this, I am bringing in Claire Anderson. She graduated from Harvard College and then the Stanford Graduate School of Business and began her career at Bain and Company before joining Capterra as their new general manager. And she's gonna join us today to talk about all of those things that are gonna help you with your business in 2019 when it comes to tech. So many important things you're gonna learn today. So stick around, we're gonna kick right in when we get back from thanking our sponsor. Wish you could shine a spotlight on your top candidates when you post a job? Great news. ZipRecruiter will do just that. ZipRecruiter identifies the right people and actively invites them to apply to your job. Then, as applications come in, they analyze each one and spotlight the top candidates to save you time and make sure you never miss a great match. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter the smartest way to hire. Claire, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. What's up, Fire Nation? Um, I think the most interesting thing I could share with you that most people don't know, I try and keep it a very close close secret, but now it will not be such a a close one, is um, I really like myself some British costume dramas. And so <laughs> if, if there's a costume and it involves British uh, anything, then I'm probably watching it. What's maybe one recommendation in that genre that maybe our listeners, like we've all watched Downton Abbey, but like what's one that maybe we haven't watched that you think could really be awesome? Great question. Pole Dark is one that is certainly um, interesting, although I w- might recommend the book over the actual video series. Uh, Another one, again, another book that I love more than the video series, but totally worth watching is Outlander. Outlander. Awesome. Well, I'm already watching Poldark, so Outlander is going to be in the queue. But uh, shifting more towards the point of our chat today, Claire, what exactly is Capterra? Like, what does Capterra do as a business? Sure. We, we, Capterra, help people, and specifically small businesses, find the right software for them. Uh, hunting and pecking around the web to figure out what POS system you should be using is a painful experience. And we try and make it a little less painful by gathering together all of the potential uh, software options out there for that particular you know, solution. And that, by the way, and about 750 other types of solutions, so everything from accounting software to yoga studio software. And we basically line up all of the potential players uh, that you might want to consider, give you comparison tools and filters to help you get to viable contenders and then allow you to connect easily with those vendors. So um, basically try and take a little bit of the stress out of finding software. This is something we actually talk a lot about on Entrepreneurs on Fire, Claire, is how important our time, our energy, our bandwidth is as entrepreneurs. And there is such a sunk cost going in when you go down the road with the wrong software, with the wrong choice, no matter what it might be for an app or whatever you're using for your business, because you're getting your team trained up, you're doing this, you're doing that. And then a couple of months down the road, you're like, man, this doesn't do actually what I want it to do. But something like Captera Fire Nation, I mean, you can read the reviews, you can look at the ratings, you can stop that before it even starts because you have the opportunity to see exactly what's going on. You know, a great analogy that I would use right now, because I just got back from a 60 day European trip. We used Airbnb for everything. And I tell, tell you how many times those reviews on Airbnb saved our lives, like so much street noise at night or like the shower doesn't work or whatever it might be. We would have had a horrible experience, but because the reviews were able to choose the right place. So Fire Nation, having these opportunities for people that have used these pieces of software to be able to go to a place like Capterra and really make the right choice for your business the first time, not the fourth or fifth time, is so critical to you moving in the right direction. But Claire, you went to Harvard College and the Stanford Graduate School of Business. I mean, you began your career with Bain and Company. You had a lot of options because of that resume, because of that the experience you had built up over the years. Why did you join Capterra? Like, what made you make that leap? Great question. For me, it's all about culture. I um, have had the pleasure and the privilege of working across a variety of different industries. And sort of right before Capterra, I was uh, in a series of VC-backed 
startups. Um, the last one sold to Oracle, and I decided I didn't want to stay at Oracle, um, in part because of the travel, um, but in part because sort of some of the cultural values in the way the Oracle machine works weren't totally aligned with mine. And um, and I found that Captera really had sort of the organizational orientation to the world that I think is really important. Our four core values are to seek the good, to do great work, to be ridiculously helpful, and to keep on getting better. And the opportunity for me here was to sort of take these truly lived values inside of the organization and actually help them manifest more obviously in the products um, that we put out for our buyer. And uh, because it's a a two-sided business, right, we have folks who are coming in looking for software and the way we make our money is not by charging the buyers, it's rather by um, providing leads to vendors. So passing along or or enabling buyers who believe that this software could be the right fit for them to connect easily with the vendors, we get paid on a um, cost per click basis. And so um, helping these vendors, many of whom are small businesses themselves, um, find their buyers and flourish and grow is really exciting to me. And um, one of the things that I love the most about sort of what we're doing now is really, um, you know, this was a bootstrapped organization. Um, The founder sold to Gartner in 2015. I took over from him. His name's Mike Ortner. He's a fabulous guy. And um, And business, the organization itself is actually very much like a startup, even though we're in this big company now and and we're certainly not a small business anymore. Um, But our systems and our processes, the way decisions get made, um, how we choose to focus our time uh, are all sort of new things that we need to scale. And so that's been really, really fun for me. There are three words that you said that to me are so important for you, Fire Nation, listening right now to really take away be ridiculously helpful. If you are doing that, if you are being ridiculously helpful to your clients, to your customers, just to the general public, you're going to win at some level. If you are being ridiculously helpful, you are going to win. That value that you're providing, that value that you're adding to the world is going to pay massive dividends. So I love those three words, Claire. I love how you put it. Be ridiculously helpful. And real quick, Fire Nation, because I know we're saying like Capterra, Capterra, Capterra. Just so you can mentally visualize this as you're like running or driving the car, it's Capterra, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A, so Capterra. And Claire is going to be dropping some value bombs on this audio masterclass, which we have decided to call Tech That Will Set Your Business on Fire in 2019, because Fire Nation, choosing the wrong tech will burn your business to the ground in a bad way, and choosing the right tech will set your business on fire in a great way. And that's exactly what Capterra will help you do. Choose the right tech to set your business on fire. So Claire, give us just a quick overview of what this masterclass is going to be. We have some great bullet points. The interview flow we're going to go through is going to be awesome. But just give a couple teasers for Fire Nation. Absolutely. We are going to cover a bunch of different things. Why digital marketing is so important to acquiring new customers why budgeting for data security technology is really important for your business, no matter what size business you have. We're going to talk about how SMBs should be using cloud computing to bring big power to the business. And also why finance and accounting software is a must have for any business that's looking to grow. And some of these things you're hearing, Fire Nation, you might be like, man, I'm not sure if that sounds super interesting, but I can tell you one thing, it is super important and Claire and myself are going to make it super interesting. So definitely stick around for all of that. And let's just dive in, Claire, to the first thing to really sink our teeth into, which is why is digital marketing crucial for anybody out there looking to acquire new customers? Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, the answer to that question really lies in us just being humans and taking a look at the way we live our lives today, which for me involves uh, last night I was at home with my husband and son um, and there were four screens going. I was on a computer. My (laughs) son was on the iPad. My husband was on his computer. We had the TV going. Um, You know, my mom called. So there was a cell phone in the mix that made five. Uh, It's we are a technology enabled species, especially here in the in the West. And so uh, if you're not digital, if you don't have some form of digital presence, 
and are trying to connect with your customers through digital channels, then it's going to be really, really hard to ever, you know, grow. I know that that Fire Nation is all about growth and success as entrepreneurs. Um, and you can have really small localized success through word of mouth, but digital is like the, you know, on fire version of word of mouth. And so if you don't have, if you're not there, you know, they won't hear you, they won't see you, they won't find you. Um, and you're missing this opportunity to extend the personal relationships across time and space um, and geography. So Claire, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here for a second, but I really feel like you're good at thinking on your feet. So we're just going to go for it because I know what my audience really can resonate and connect with are actual examples. So you recognize how people are using Captera. I'm sure you have some great case studies and testimonials, you know, galore for people actually utilizing the services. Can you maybe just talk about one that you really feel like applies to this point that we're talking about on how digital marketing is crucial for acquiring new customers? How has somebody maybe in the past utilized Captera to make sure that they're maximizing this specific use? Sure. Um, you know, I can give you an example of um, a business here in Washington, D.C., uh, you know, female owned business. She her, her organization puts on some pretty important events in the city and she uses Captera a lot. I met her through a, you know, through, through a, a Washington Business Journal event um, that we were both attending. And uh, she said, oh, yeah, I know Captera. I use it all the time. And I said, Oh, that's fabulous. Like, I would love to know more. Tell me more. And basically, for as you talked about at the beginning, you know, time is the most important asset that we have, how we choose to use our time and focus our time matters a lot. And as you know, as she was starting her small business, um, which has now grown considerably, uh, she, she really needed to, to figure out like, okay, how do I get the word out that I do events? And then how do once I've done, you know, someone's event, how do I uh, help them be my ambassadors in the market? Um, and also, how do I keep in touch with them? And so, uh, you know, the ability to find software that lets you first and foremost, um, let's say, connect with people you already know in a systematic way is really important. So if you're looking, you know, for customer relationship management software, hey, I need a platform that allows me to understand, you know, how to nurture relationships that I've started in person um, over email, going to Captera and searching for customer relationship management or email software and taking a look at the different options and knowing that um, and using, using some filters to say, you know, I only have five people who need to access this particular piece of software. I don't have 50 people. So let me just look at the stuff that's kind of for people in that range and then going in and actually being able to do a side by side comparison to say, you know, what features does the CRM have? How many of those features do I think are actually actually important for me versus nice to have? And therefore, you know, kind of what my spending threshold, um, you know, what's the best value for money? You can take a look at lists that say, here's, you know, what people are using generally in the space, 20 is most popular or Here's what's most user friendly because some people have been burned by other software that is not user friendly, takes way too long to figure out how to use and doesn't deliver what it promises. Well, here we've kind of short listed some options for you, but you can also go into each one of the software um, sort of candidates that you have in your list and look at all of the reviews that we have on them. And I, I would really encourage people, I'm sure everyone understands this from, you know, living in in, in, uh, in a world with Amazon, but um, there's kind of three things I like to share about reviews. One is they're incredibly important. Um, as you said, you know, Airbnb reviews are magic. Yeah. And they have also saved yeah. you many times, um, especially for that street noise issue. Um, but, uh, but also, you know, going in and, and looking at the reviews and kind of looking at software reviews, knowing that, you know, you have to take reviews with a grain of salt. Um, we do our very best to make sure that every review that's on our site is actually um, written by a human person um, who has who, whose background has um, a reason for them to be using that software so that we have, you know, as high quality reviews as we can possibly have. 
Um, because we know on Amazon, for example, there are whole industries that try and churn out fake reviews right. and skew things. And that's just not, not, not good <laughs> from my point of view. So because we want to be ridiculously helpful, we actually have invested a ton of resources in really spinning up um, kind of a reviews uh, offering that that we believe holds as much water as is humanly possible to hold um, in terms of a you know good to drink good for you real person um, reviews that have actually used the product or experienced the product and could contribute something so it's a little bit different than Airbnb where you know you know that that human has stayed in the room um, when you don't have that kind of experience uh, it's a bit more difficult but we do our best and then so that's the first thing is. Um, reviews are incredibly important. The second thing is uh, make sure that they're quality reviews. And the third thing is look at look for recent reviews because rev, you know we have you know many pieces of software on our site that have thousands of reviews. But um, really looking at reviews that you know much like if you're on say a TripAdvisor and you can say like is this couple friendly or is this kid friendly or is this good for pets? Um, looking at re reviews where people um, are concerned about the things you're concerned about street noise you know if the equivalent for that in crm is i want to know that the um that the that the template uh editor is easy to use and i don't need to have coding a coding background in order to actually you know get an email formatted then that's that particular criteria is something you should be looking for in reviews and look for recent reviews because the reality is these software companies are evolving their products, especially the cloud-based ones, very quickly. And so things that are said in reviews um, a year or two years ago may not be true now. So look for the recent reviews because those are going to give you the best handle on what today's you know, features and functionality can offer you. And let me add one little hack that I found incredibly helpful, Fire Nation. This works on Amazon and Airbnb, and I'm sure to some level on Capterra as well. Focus on the four and three star reviews because the reality is this, you're always going to have people that are just raving about something. The five stars are just, it's just going to be all bubbling about it. So we get it. Those are all amazing reviews. And the ones, they're just haters and there's always going to be haters. But those four and three star reviews, I mean, these people have really said, you know what? This isn't an amazingly perfect experience, but it's not bad either. And they leave very thoughtful, very helpful reviews. And I've chosen many places because of their four and three star reviews because they bring up some great points, but you know, they don't apply to me. Like, you know, like there might be one for an Airbnb example of, you know, hey, this is in the downtown district and you know, it's it's not close to any public transportation. Well, hey, I may not care that it's not close to public transportation. I get why they might have deducted a star, but they really take the time to leave a thoughtful, thorough review on that level of the four and the three star. So that's helped me a lot, just a little bit of a hack. And Claire, one thing that I know for a fact, after interviewing over 2,000 successful entrepreneurs and talking to Fire Nation on a day-to-day -day basis via email and social media, I'm just going to be honest, data security technology, it's not super high on most entrepreneurs' priority list but maybe it should be. So let's talk to you about why budgeting for data security could really be important and critical for entrepreneurs. Yeah, it's a really important question and one um, that you know is popping up in the news more and more for the big guys like Facebook um, or the you know or, or the government. But and you think, well, that's nice for them, but I doubt I'm going to have Russian hackers you know coming into <laughs> my retail business, right? And the reality is, is that. Um, the web is a glorious place and it's also a dark place. And what we found, so first of all, and this was sort of a staggering fact from our research for me, was our research shows that nearly half of SMBs are budgeting for data security technology, which really surprised me because the, you know, 715 or so small businesses that we interviewed um, or uh, ranged, from, uh, ranged from insurance companies to retail to, um, you know, sort of verticals that you wouldn't necessarily think, think are thinking about this. It's like they weren't all software companies themselves. And the reason why it's so important is because even though it might not be, you know, trying to mess with a political system, there are people uh, who just think it's fun to do this. And um, they kind of attack at random. They've written machine algorithms and the algorithms go to town. And what we know is that it can cost SMBs between, you know, let's call it about $80,000 up to $150,000 um, 
for each incident. And the even more interesting and and, and scary fact is that 60% of the SMBs that get hacked actually go out of business within six months of a breach. Um, and that's not from, that's not even from our research, that's from Verizon's um, research in this case. And so, it, you know, I, my sister is an entrepreneur, actually. She um, has a great uh, catering business and a restaurant in Brooklyn. Um, and if you let me tell uh, you what it is, I will ha- be happy to do so. Sure, go for it. She's got a great restaurant. The catering business is called Little Pheasant, and the restaurant is called Pheasant. It's at 445 Avenue in Brooklyn. Um, and you can go read the reviews um, on Yelp and on Eater and uh, and see for yourself whether or not it's the place you'd want to go. But, you know, I'm completely biased, and I think it's fabulous. It's uh, <laughs> she and her husband started it up. Um, last November, they opened, so they're almost a year old. And, you know, it, my sister will probably not be totally delighted. I'm sharing this with the entire Fire Nation, but uh, but but I think everybody who's listening to this can probably empathize. You know, she she's stressed out. Um, it's it is it is just the most anxiety inducing experience you can do to both follow your dream and also live hand to mouth as you try and get this thing off the floor. And so I think you know they're very good. Vince is a fantastic chef. And it's not his first rodeo with a restaurant. So that's great. They have some experience. Pat is super creative, my sister, um, and, and a phenomenal business person. She's better at Excel than I am. Um, but, uh, but it is tough. And you don't anticipate things like your water um, boiler breaking <laughs> or uh, that the people in the lot next door are going to start building a uh, new condo building. And that's going to wreak havoc on your outdoor garden. Or, which you know you need to have to have the number of tables in order to hit the profit numbers you need to stay alive. And so when you know an, a, a two thousand or a five thousand dollar incident is huge for them, an eighty thousand dollar incident would literally put them out, out of business. And so that's why I think data security is so important because if anybody gets into your digital operations and just screws with your financials, um, it, you know directly or indirectly, it's going to be massive times. And really, you know, depending on what stage of business you're in, just potentially a a death knell for the business. Well, let me jump in here, Claire, and ask you, what would you give as a couple of the first steps that our listeners should take to maybe even just first start learning about which data security technology might be right for their business? Yeah, it's great. So the first thing I would do is actually just Google things like that, right? Just Google those questions and, um, you know, I'll follow up with you, John, to to um, give a, a couple of good articles I found on that after this. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes page. Google around and just get familiar, um, especially, you know, sort of different industry verticals have different concerns. So I think just orienting to kind of what is the state of data security in your industry is a good first step to kind of, you know, do that orientation. And then um, the, the second thing is to, you know, you can come to Capture. Sarah, we have a whole bunch of articles and research on data security and why it matters and um, how you should start thinking about it for your business. Uh, But one of the easiest things I can recommend um, is just know who's got access to your systems and what level of access they have. Um, Something that, you know, everybody should understand is, you know, if you already have finance and accounting software, who has access to that? How many people know the password? If you've got a POS system, um, who's able to actually uh, enable refunds or discounts and to what degree can they enable those versus not like getting really clear on who's got access to systems um, that could uh, that that could breach any form of data um, are is really important and making sure you have good, kind of good guidelines policies uh, points of view that are well and easy well communicated and easily understood by staff that's kind of basic point number one. And then point number two in terms of, okay, I want to take the next step. Let's say you've got an e-commerce um, business and you are you know, worried about um, getting hit by a bot and um, suddenly you know, your credit card processing fees go through the roof or something like this. Um, adding CAPTCHA to your logout pages or your login pages, but, but putting CAPTCHAs um, or you know, when I say log it, I mean check out. Uh, putting captures on your on your um, form fill pages are really you know somewhat annoying for people, but you'll see more and more companies doing that over time because they really want to make sure it's not a bot accessing their system. Um, and then uh, 
Uh, and then actually, you know, getting more sophisticated, uh, if you've got a business and you um, need to make sure that a lot of bots don't take your engineer's time, I mean, this is a real life example from, from our company. Um, we, you know, we, I've got a great engineer who, who wakes up at two in the morning morning when alert happens because there's some some funky traffic pattern going on that um, could potentially be costing uh, us business or or bringing down our um, our in, our sort of system our whole operating system our network and uh, and so he has to get up and kind of deal with that and we've just been in the market for what I would call like uh, traffic shaping uh, solutions to have kind of automatic monitoring of traffic patterns and um, allow us to learn really easily um, and in a kind of continuously learning way about what type of traffic we should be expecting and where there are anomalies. Um, and so there are different companies for that. But again, one is just get oriented yourself to what the particular issues are in your industry. The second one is make sure you have systems and processes and protocols and just sort of clarity around who has access to data, who has access to what data and what level of access they should have and what permissions they should be following and make sure you actually follow up to make sure that that's true. Um, three is, you know, if you're in a web business and it involves credit card transactions, um, definitely make sure that your CAPTCHA um, is enabled in your landing pages. And then the really big one is come to CAPTERA and, and figure out what kind of software can help you with traffic shaping or bot mitigation um, or whatever it is in your industry that's a particular problem, um, and then start start talking to vendors about what they can offer. And obviously, as you said in the earlier bit of of this podcast, like read those reviews. Like, there's nothing like reviews to help you from keeping the same mistakes other people have made and standing on the shoulders of giants. Because Fire Nation, the reality is there are a lot of people and businesses that are out there that are very similar to yours. You can go to a place like Capterra. You can find those people who are like you, who are running businesses like yours, and you can see what they're saying. You can see what they're using. You're going to see why they're using it and why they didn't like X, but why they loved Y or Z. That's so critical because we are all standing upon the shoulders of giants. Learn from those who have come before you. You know, that's why I keep saying all the time for five years now, we've been sharing our monthly income reports, not just so we can show you, you know, all the ways that we're succeeding, but we want to show you all the ways that we're failing and making mistakes. So you don't make those same mistakes that we make. That's what a tool like Capterra is going to do for you as well in these different areas. And if you think Fire Nation, Claire's been dropping value bombs, you're right. But we got some more coming as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsor. Fire Nation, I'm here with Ian Siegel, the CEO of Zip Recruiter. And Ian, I assume that you had a few hiring challenges of your own before you founded Zip Recruiter. What encouraged you to build Zip Recruiter to begin with? The decision to build Zip Recruiter stemmed from my own frustration with how time consuming and frustrating the hiring process was. I was working for startups where we were too small to have our own HR department. And so I was posting my own jobs to multiple job sites and then finding my own way to get the candidates out of those sites. It was one of the things I looked forward to the least in executing my role. I built ZipRecruiter to create a one-click simple solution where you push a button and your job goes to every job site on the web and then all the candidates come to one easy to review list. It makes the hiring process so much simpler and it makes it so much faster to find the right person. Fire Nation, I can empathize with how Ian used to feel. Can you? Because before ZipRecruiter, you had to go to multiple sites, each with their own unique login and password combination. The process was so disorganized. Being able to access all your job candidates in one place is a huge time saver. Having an organized process is critical, Fire Nation, when you hire, and it's built in with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring simple. With one click, ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. Zip Recruiter's powerful technology scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right skills, education, and experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. It's no wonder Zip Recruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. based on Trustpilot ratings of hiring sites with over a thousand reviews. And right now, Fire Nation, you can try Zip Recruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash fire. That's Zip Recruiter dot com slash f i r e ziprecruiter dot com slash fire ziprecruiter the smartest way to hire 
So Claire, we're back. And I know you know a little bit about Fire Nation now, but most of our listeners were running small businesses. But the beautiful thing about today's world is that we can run our small businesses like big businesses because of the tools and the technology that's out there. So Claire, how can we use things like cloud computing to bring big power to our small business? This is really actually for everyone. Um, There's two things in particular I would highlight. One is you know, if you're one, running a web business, everybody's familiar with, um, you know, AWS and Google Cloud and, you know, Microsoft Azure, like everybody's got, the, all the big companies have their offerings, but it's so fabulous because you don't have to buy hardware. <laughs> you can just scale up or scale down um, your needs and it doesn't, you don't have to be a big company to take advantage of these services and you don't even have to be medium sized or even a large, small company. You can be a company of any size and depending on um, kind of the computing power that you need, you can kind of turn it on um, very easily and turn it off very very easily so you're not stuck with super expensive hardware that's not getting a lot of use. So um, that's sort of the the straightforward answer. The the answer that applies to absolutely everybody is, of course, um, the shift to sort of software as a service versus installed software. So going from tiny life example of having to download and install uh, TurboTax, um, you know, in your personal life to being able to do TurboTax online and come back to it from any computer at any point in the world um, is really a nice change. And that's because TurboTax has moved to the cloud and they've got this great cloud offering. And so you can use it. And similarly, um, there are, you know, literally tens of thousands of different types of software. It's pretty much any software you need it is cloud-based, and that allows for um, quicker time to upgrade. Um, you don't have to reinstall things. You just click that, you know, upgrade button or whatever it is. Um, new features come online faster. Uh, there's more ability to get real-time feedback from the community of users. And so as a software, you know, company, you can hopefully develop your version of a ridiculously helpful product much more quickly. Um, those, are the, those are the two big ways that I see that cloud computing is just a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing. I mean, I'm headquartered in Puerto Rico. So this is where my studio is. This is where I spend, you know, seven, eight months of the year. But I travel a lot. And I just got back from that 60-day European trip I was talking about. And the amazing thing about being on the road for 60 days is that no matter where I was, whether it be Lisbon or Edinburgh or Greece or wherever it was, I could literally just use my laptop, which is not the computer. I use a desktop computer at my headquarters, but my laptop, and I could just log into Dropbox or or Backblaze, you know, or Carbonite or any of these other potential cloud computing, you know, AWS, and I could access my entire hard drive. I could access anything I've uploaded there, and it's all up there. So even if you know the worst of the worst happened, like did you know a year ago almost to the to the month when Hurricane Maria tore through Puerto Rico, if I was gone when that happened, and my entire house blew over and you know my entire computer was destroyed I could literally deploy everything that was on my computer onto wherever I was remotely in the matter of hours and like that is such a peace of mind fire nation that's just one of the many 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 uses of cloud computing that Claire's talking about as well so before we move on to the next and final topic Claire is there anything you want to kind of drive home in this area well, it's great for parents or dog owners or uh, let's say my sister <laughs> to have uh, the ability to look at what's going on thousands of miles away from you. So, you know, obviously we can thank we can thank the Internet and, and cloud computing for um, systems that allow us to to have nanny cams or or doggy cams or in my sister's case, a restaurant cam so she can figure out, you know, how productive the the cooking staff is being. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you might be laughing, Fire Nation, but while I was in, on a cruise ship, pulling into port, I literally pulled up my phone, logged onto the cruise ship's internet, and my handyman was back here doing some work on my house, and I was just watching him. And I like, I even sent him like a joke message. I'm like, Neil, you just walked by that branch. Like, why didn't you pick it up and throw it in the woods? And like, he's like, oh, you got me. And it was just like, like, it's such a crazy world that we live in. And of course, you don't want to go nutso with it, but it can be super helpful and really make your life better. And real quick before we move on, Claire, um, I really want Fire Nation. If you're in the Brooklyn area, stop in to Claire's sister's restaurant and just let her know that because her, are you the older or younger sister, Claire? 
I'm the older one. Because her bigger sister was raving about her and her, her restaurant on Entrepreneurs on Fire. You had to stop by and check it out. So if you're ever in the Brooklyn area, make it happen. One more time, Claire. What's the name of the restaurant and the location? Absolutely. So the name is Pheasant with the P-H, Pheasant. Um, and the address is 445 Graham Avenue in Brooklyn. And honestly, Fire Nation, if you do go there, um, please let Kat know that um, I sent you because um, I probably couldn't afford buying a drink for everybody in Fire Nation. <laughs> but for those people who want to go to, to Pheasant and check it out, I'm sure your taste buds won't be disappointed. But I'd also um, I, I'd also love to kind of set something up to, to contribute towards um, towards a drink or, or a dessert of your choice. I can highly recommend um, anything chocolate that comes out of the kitchen, although that's not Vince's, the chef's uh, favorite dessert. It is my favorite dessert. And um, pretty much never unhappy with any of the drinks. They've got a great bartender. So um, please let please let them know that you came from Fire Nation. I'll have a little uh Flush fun set up for the next month. Or so. <laughs> I love it. Fire Nation. Definitely make that happen. I mean, you can go into this great restaurant in Brooklyn. You can just mention that you heard Claire on Entrepreneurs on Fire. You're part of Fire Nation. You're going to get a drink or a dessert. Um, I'm a little bummed because I'm not actually going to be up in New York City till March because I'm going to be there for two weeks uh, for the Big East basketball tournament I like to go to every single year at Madison Square Garden. So uh, I'm still going to shoot over, uh, Claire, to, to Brooklyn just to see what's up. I'll bring some friends too. That'll be a blast. But alas, we have reached the last topic of today, which is using finance and accounting software to maximize the profits in your business. Because Claire, so many people find out way too late that it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. What are those net profits? That's what's going to have you win and allow you to keep winning as an entrepreneur. And finance and accounting software is going to get you there. I've utilized it from day one, Fire Nation, and it is a massive reason for our financial success. So Claire, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. And you, that's a brilliant way of phrasing it too. It's not the money you make, it's the money you keep. Um, and if you, and by the way, keeping track of money um, is is time consuming. <laughs> so yeah. it's a perfect candidate for software. Um, and I think, you know, everybody hopefully is using um, some kind of software to help them. They're not, if you're using paper ledgers, it's definitely time to invest in some technology. Uh, but uh, but if you're, you know, using like a QuickBooks, that's a great kind of door. But as your business gets more sophisticated, you're probably going to need uh, more than more than that kind of basic entry level uh, finance and accounting software. And I would say that if you can only invest in one technology in the coming year and you don't already have it, it's finance and accounting software that you should do to make sure that you can keep the profits that you're making. Um, you know, unless, of course, you're a professional accountant and you feel like it's fun <laughs> to do accounts receivables and accounts payables and sales taxes and income tax reporting and, you know, be ready for audits. Uh, I don't personally think that's a super fun way to spend my time. And so I'm very grateful uh, that there are entire software solutions that can do it um, for me with much less pain than it would be for me to do it, do it only for myself. Uh, um, and so that time savings obviously goes into, into, into doing things you love to do. Um, and, and it can also help make your business better because when you can track, um, and, and I would say this then extends into another category we're not going to cover today, but into kind of business intelligence software, but um, finance accounting software is sort of your first look uh, or your like first gateway drug into into BI into business intelligence because you can use your finance and accounting software to really understand what your biggest selling products or services are or who your best customers are um, and you can use the data to kind of figure out where to supersize where to trim back um, where you need to ask more questions um, it, it's a great it's a great tool not only for doing the task at hand, but also using the data from that task at hand to begin to figure out how to fine tune your go to market. Um, and, you know, John, one of the things um, that I think people really need to keep in mind when you're looking for uh, accounting software is what do you really need? I really um, encourage people to think about um, buying software like 
hiring people. And best practices in hiring individuals are first to figure out your needs list. Like what is, you know, write a clear job description. What is this, this role going to do? What, you know, KPIs, what, what are the key metrics that you're going to hold um, that, that role to, to know that it was worth hiring them? <laughs> how will they, how will they demonstrate their ROI? Um, what, what is the most important skill set that they need to bring to the table? Sometimes you really care about technical expertise and you don't care so much about uh, personality and how kind of outgoing or how, how sophisticated a manager they are. You just need somebody to like get the work done. Sometimes you really care about the management stuff and you kind of got other people to do the technical stuff or sometimes, or I would hope in every case, people care about it being, you know, people being, you know, diligent, show up, say what they mean, mean what they say. Um, these attributes the sort of the, the same way that you would interview a person for a job. And the most important part about that is actually first being super clear with yourself about what that job is and what success is and how you're going to know that it's successful. In the same way, when you're buying software, really think about it like an interview, which means in finance and accounting, for example, you know, clearly you're going to want um, double entry accounting, for example, and you're probably going to want um, being able to import transactions from your bank and cloud-based accounting software for all the benefits we mentioned earlier. You're probably going to want some reporting tools to get that extra kind of juice from the data exhaust. You're probably going to want accountant access um, if you were working with an external accountant. But you may or may not need uh, invoicing or multi-currency support or payroll processing um, or payment processing or third-party integrations may or may not be that important to you. And so you got to know what's like essential. It's what the essential role that software is going to play and make sure that those things are really strong. So when you read your reviews, make sure that the meat of what you're trying to get, uh, everybody likes. And then be choosy about how much you're willing to pay for the stuff that doesn't really matter to you. Um, and again, you know, like we talked about before, reviews are a great place to figure that out. Um, and and if you're not sure exactly what features or what what functionality you need, always start by you know finding those 101 guides. It's, you know, accounting software buying guide, for example, is something that we put out every year. Like, how should you go about thinking about this category of software? What's important? What's not important? That can really help as well. Claire, you said a lot of awesome things today, but my favorite is still be ridiculously helpful because Fire Nation, if you can embody that in everything that you do, you're going to succeed at a good, high, awesome level. And that's what Captera does. They are ridiculously helpful and that's why they're so successful. So Claire, a lot of great takeaways from this episode, but give us one thing that you want to make sure that we walk away with, that we keep it in our memory banks? What's one thing that you want us to make sure that we get from our chat today? I guess I'm going to say I want you guys to remember two things. Okay. One is that if you're looking for software, uh, Captera is a great place to start that search. Um, but but the, the, the ridiculously, well, I actually consider that ridiculously helpful because it really will save you time. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but sort of the non-Captera related thing that I really hope people remember is that um, everybody, for the most part, finds the process of searching for software uh, overwhelming, unpleasant. I have heard the word dread used before. Um, it is, you know, nobody feels like they are just absolutely fantastic at making sure they pick the right stuff and feel like, you know, they, they don't, have any anxiety about, did I actually just do my, did I spend too much for this, et cetera. Um, so just, I hope people remember that, um, you're not alone and that you can learn a ton from other people's experiences, which I know is what this podcast is all about. Um, and that there, no matter what industry you're in or what it is you need, whether it's software or something else, um, asking for help is, is, just the most amazingly powerful tool you have um, at your disposal and it's available to you anytime and 
organizations like mine and many others that John, you've interviewed, um, are do do try and help because um, we all want to make the world a better place and have people enjoy themselves more rather than less in whatever way we can. Love all of that. And I would just say number three, Fire Nation, go to Pheasant in Brooklyn and get a free dessert. That's the other takeaway from this episode for sure. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> so great chat for all the obvious reasons. And Claire, a uh, quick question, like what is the best way for Fire Nation to check out Capterra? Is it just to go to capterra.com? Is there a better route to go? Nope. It's real simple. Capterra, double R, so C-A-P-T-R-R-A.com. Um, and, you know, what you'll land on is our homepage. Uh, if you're looking for specific software right now, that's a great place to go. Um, another thing you could do is just Google blog Capterra. Um, we're working on getting the blog better integrated with the main site, but uh, there is a treasure trove of information in there as well. So, um, and of course, honestly, if, if I can be helpful, I'm happy to try and be. <laughs> and so you can also feel free to ma- email me um, directly at claire at capterra.com. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with Claire and JLD today. So keep up the heat. And if you just head over to eofire.com and you type Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E in our search bar, the show notes page is going to pop up with everything that we've talked about today. Uh, The show notes with the links and the galore. I mean, everything is going to be there, period. And of course, just head directly over to capterra.com as well to start those awesome searches to get your technology squared away. And I just want to say, Claire, thank you for taking the time to share your truth, your knowledge with Fire Nation today. And for that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bomb content was brought to you by Claire and the Cap Terra team. They got some cool stuff going on over there. And if you are ready to accomplish that one single uno big goal, the Freedom Journal is key because when you follow the step-by-step guidance, you're going to accomplish that number one goal in just 100 days. So visit thefreedomjournal.com. Use promo code podcast for a nice little discount. And thank you for listening to my podcast. So I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I will catch you on the flip side. You've heard me say this before, ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Well, what makes ZipRecruiter so smart? It learns what you like. When you post a job on ZipRecruiter and start reviewing applications, your feedback teaches ZipRecruiter's matching technology more about the precise skills and experiences you're looking for. That's how ZipRecruiter invites more qualified people to apply, which helps you quickly get better and better candidates until you find the perfect one. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right free just go to ziprecruiter.com slash fire that's ziprecruiter.com slash fire ziprecruiter once again the smartest way to hire